Hi there! I tend to work with multiple Ruby applications at the same time. Whether it is my open source activity or projects for my clients, in either case I don't always have an impact on what coding styles I am supposed to use. One team prefers the double quotes, while other teams a single. It's a never-ending war of people screaming about syntax, while honestly, I don't care, as long as it's consistent within the project. I want to focus on problem solving, and while in the ideal world everyone would place dots at the end of the line, at the end of the day, it's not what I'm paid for. I am paid for deliveries. Let's take a look at PR reviews. Reviewing PRs takes time, and when code is consistent within a project, it makes it easier to spot any real problems, and this is why I care about code style in general. PR reviews should be as easy as possible, and when I do it, I want to be focused on logical issues, not pointing out suggestions that there is an empty line missing at the end of the file. Fortunately, there are some tools that can help us automate the tedious work of tracking the linter changes, and today, I want to say a few bits about one particular solution. Probably every Ruby developer had heard about the Robocop Jam. It's an amazing lintel library that helps us analyze and format our code to follow the defined guidelines. Started by Bozidar Batsov around 2012, it's also the one of the oldest popular Ruby gems still in use. Aside of the code formatting issues, it can also help you discover a few more meaningful problems, like unused variables which may be caused by typos, too complex classes and methods, unreachable conditionals, performance issues, security overlooks, and many more. Robocop is so popular that recently it managed to be on the list of top loved and top frustrating Ruby gems on Ruby on Rails 2022 community survey. This is quite an achievement. But I've wondered why it's not only loved. Why people are frustrated because of Robocop? I have a theory that one of the reasons is that some people just don't use it properly. In this episode then, I've decided to list four of the Robocop related frustrations I could think about and I'm going to come with a few tips for you to remove each of the frustration out of your head. I encourage you to list your other issues you have experienced with this gem in the discussion threads, so we can find solutions together. Now, let's begin. First thing that comes to my mind when I'm forcing my brain to figure out possible Robocop's downside is the defaults. If you want to integrate Robocop with an old project, defaults can really bite you. I can imagine you get frowned after seeing something like this. It could take ages to fix all those issues. And let's be honest, there is no client eager to pay you for breaking all the too long lines in the codebase. Even though Robocop has the dash A option, which automatically fixes the detected issues, it still needs to be reviewed. And it's only a tool. However, there are several ways to overcome this problem. Robocop allows you to automatically generate a file containing all the detected issues and skipping them in the next runs. By calling in your terminal Robocop with a flag autogenconfig, you'll end up with a YAML file where a list of possible changes in the code will be placed and saved for later. Once you have it, you don't need to worry about existing linter issues anymore and only tackle them piece by piece when you actually have a time for this refactoring. However, if that's not enough, let's check one more tip related to defaults. The default configuration may be somewhat against your or your team's habits. If that's the case, you may change that by reading the great Robocop's documentation, finding the incorrect rule and adjust your preferences. I like to just download setups that resonate with me. Here is the collection of all default rules for Robocop. And here is the Airbnb Robocop setup which I've used for a while in the past. Just download the file and save it as a robocop.yaml and you can now way easier adjust any rules that drive you crazy. However, if you really don't want to care about the configuration defaults, maybe it may be interesting to you to take a look at the standard RB gem, which is built on top of Robocop, but with simplified rules setup to make it easier for people to manage their configs in the easiest possible way. I can imagine that people could get some level of frustration if after spending a few hours discussing code style rules, you find yourself the only one actually following them. The thing is, 
that any kind of code style agreement is hard for developers. We all have our muscle memory evolve over years of working in a specific setup and preferences. You can't just come to me and say, since tomorrow we will all use the call method instead of just empty brackets and expect me to follow it without an error, even if I agree. I just can't adapt to such a change immediately. Imagine I reorder your keyboard keys swapping an A with the B letter. I would love to see if you can avoid any errors in a single article blog without thinking too much. This is what muscle memory means. However, even for this, Robocop also comes with help. In the majority of cases, Robocop allows you to run your code and don't care too much about style violations as it has a built-in auto-fixing mechanism. If you'll run Robocop-A, it will try to automatically correct all the issues, leaving you only those that are unable to be fixed using automatic tooling. This significantly reduces the time needed to change our habits and we can avoid frustration caused by that. How cool is that? However, I bet people will forget to run it before requesting the PR review. So here are the other improvements of this part. You may configure the GitHub Actions or any other CI tool to run Robocop on the latest changes or on the whole repository each time your teammates push new comments. In the case of violations detected, your build may fail, forcing people to fix it immediately. This is awesome because it prevents people to waste time during code reviews completely, as you just don't review failed builds. Also, it prevents people from feeling guilty about forgetting the styling rules because they get feedback from the machine, not other peeps. People can still get a bit frustrated though after they build failing though all tests or passing. Have you ever had a situation where you publish a genius bug fix, feeling satisfied and proud, but a moment later you get a red build notification on Slack? These sort of things can be avoided if we'd use the pre-commit or pre-push git hooks. For those who don't know, git hooks are shell commands that are run before or after certain git command. I'll not get into details this time, but you may add a pre-commit hook to always run the Robocop before you commit a change. For this, I totally recommend using the overcommit gem, which allows you to easily manage multiple git hooks from a readable YAML files. Having that covered, let's have a look at what else in Robocop usage could bring us some frustration. For big projects, I can imagine that Robocop checks can be slow. If I practice creating a lot of small encapsulated comments, I definitely won't be interested in waiting for Robocop checks for going through a large codebase every single time. Fortunately, there are ways to speed it up by a whole lot. First, you may run Robocop only against the changed files. If you want to use pre-push git hook, it's useful to run Robocop against a div with master. To list files that had been changed on your current local branch in comparison to remote master repository version, use this command. After passing the output as the input of the Robocop command, you end up with a report including only the changes. This may look scary, but hey, You've heard about shell aliases, haven't you? For pre-commit hook, however, you may only run it against currently changed Ruby files. I have only two rule violations right now, even though the whole repository is quite big already. This will save tons of time and will reduce the waiting time, making you a happier person and a more efficient developer. A big shout out to Anita Sharma for coming up with these filtered git commands in the article she wrote about running Robocop only on changed files. Finally, to speed things up even more, you may use the non-default formatter, which outputs fewer things on the screen, speeding the check a little bit too. The above code would output only the detected rules violations, which I found way faster than putting every single processed file name on the screen. Now let me go to the final source of frustration with Robocop that comes to my head. When a new Robocop version comes out, occasionally there is a change, when a rule name had been changed, a new default rule had been added or some removed. Then it requires manual updates of rules in the YAML configuration file and I can imagine 
people could get frustrated a bit because of that. This one, I don't know how to hack. I just update the Dayama files if needed. After all, Robocop is stable across minor versions. Major gem updates in general usually require some manual work to do. So I don't understand how this could bring frustration. However, if this is the case, I'd recommend you to check the Bojidar's philosophy around the topic of adding complexity to the projects with he named the Groundhog Day development method. Those four points are what I can imagine people could be frustrated about when dealing with Robocop, and I hope that the tips I've shared with you can deal with most of it. If there are other points that drive you crazy though, please leave a comment in the discussion threads for this episode, and we could together find some way around that. I want to especially thank my recent sponsors, Akila Yamane, Benjamin Klotz, and Silun for supporting this project. I really appreciate it. By helping me with a few dollars per month creating this content, you are helping the open source developers and maintainers to create amazing software for you. And remember, if you want to support my work even without money involved, the best you can do is to like, share and comment on my episodes and discussion threads. Help me add value to the open source community. As usual, here you can find two of my previous videos. Thank you all for supporting my channel. You are awesome and have a nice rest of your day.